Unit 6, Hair and Fiber, Section 1, The Anatomy of a Hair. Alright, human hair is one of the most commonly found pieces of evidence um, at the scene of a crime, and uh, it can often be a very vital link between a suspect and the actual crime scene. Um, down here, we have a list of some things that you can determine by looking at a uh, a single hair. Um, you can tell if it's animal or human. You're going to learn how to do that. Um, sometimes we're able to determine race. This isn't always 100% certain. Um, again, most people, and we'll learn this when we get to anthropology, most people are not purely of one uh, racial profile anymore, but um, a lot of times we are able to determine a, a general racial profile. Um, we can often figure out where the body hair was located on the individual's body. So, um, obviously an eyelash is going to look very different than um, a head hair uh, versus a leg hair, things like that. Um, if the hair is forcibly removed, um, this is really easily identifiable. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, if the hair has been treated with chemicals, if it's been dyed, um, you'll actually be able to, in your practical, hopefully be able to determine this on your own. Uh, and then we can actually do toxicology on it, and we can screen it for drug testing. You will not be doing this. The general structure um, of the skin, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but it is important just to understand a couple basic things. Um, you have the hair, and you have a hair follicle underneath. Now, the hair um, grows from the follicle up through the dermis and the epidermis, um, and it also is always going to be surrounded by a sebaceous gland. Now, the sebaceous oil gland is also the same type of gland that's going to result in the oils that produce the latent fingerprints. Um, but these are looking at the base of oil. This is why um, hair, or the base of the hair follicle, and this is why hair naturally gets oily um, over time is because of these sebaceous glands. Um, so two other things, um, the upper layer of dermis, uh, upper layer of skin is called the epidermis, and then underneath that you have the, um, the thicker layer of dermis. Most of the uh, identifiable structures in skin are going to be located in the dermal layer. So the actual shaft of the hair uh, itself is going to be located of three layers, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. The cuticle is going to be the outside covering, so um, the outer, you know, think of like a tree, we're talking about the different types of bark on a tree. Um, there are different types of scales that we're going to look at that um, a hair follicle can have. The cortex uh, is the next, this is kind of going to be the middle layer. Okay, the cortex. Um, it's made of something called kerat keratin and uh, is also filled with air sacs, which are called the uh, cortical fuci. Um, the quantity and the size of those uh, cortical fuci are what are going to help identify a uh, hair follicle or a hair as well. And then finally, you end with the medulla, which is going to be the internal. It's a dark layer in here. This is going to be um, the densest layer of pigment. And um, this one has a lot of uh, very, um, very obvious characteristics that we'll be using during identification. So the cuticle itself has three basic patterns. Um, again, remember thinking like the bark of a tree. You have coronal, spinous, and imbricate. Um, the coronal, I think of this kind of like a uh, this one like a pine tree. If you've ever seen a pine tree, it's got a similar uh, structure on the outside. Uh, spinous is going to be like the, um, it's going to look a little bit softer. The edges are going to be rounded. Um, it's going to look a little flaky. Imbricate is going to be um, folded in, um, tightly packed. Sometimes it'll flake out a little bit on the edges of each uh, of those scales, but um, not as evenly divided. Uh, this the spinet, uh, this one here looks ends up looking like it's more... Um, kind of rings of scales, whereas the imbricate looks like it's just kind of haphazardly scale after scale kind of built upon itself. Under mic uh, the microscope, this is what you're going to see. Um, and here, obviously, we focused in on the scales themselves. A um, couple ways you can do this. Uh, if you paint clear fingernail polish uh, on the slide, when the uh, hair polish begins to dry, becomes a little bit tacky. You put the hair on it, you wait for it to dry, and then you peel the hair off. Um, this is going to be difficult to do, 
but um, that's the method that we use. So taking a look then at this hair, um, given the patterns we talked about before, which of these uh, the three um, are we looking at? Let me go back and check your notes, make sure you get it right. Okay, hopefully you identified this one as imbricate, which it is. All right, so next we have the cortex. Um, the cortex is going to be the, the kind of the meat of the hair itself. Um, made up of two major characteristics that we're going to look at. There's melanin. Whoops. Uh, there's melanin, and then there's the, uh, what we mentioned before, the cortical fusi. Um, the melanin are going to be um, pigment granules. Um, you'll see these scattered throughout, sometimes very densely, sometimes not present much at all. Um, the cortical fusi, again, those are those air spaces. Um, as the hair grows out, um, those air spaces tend to um, dissipate. They're more pre prevalent near the root uh, than they are near the, uh, the end of the hair shaft. And then finally we have the medulla, and this is one that you're going to be able to identify easily in a magnification. Um, it's going to be that band, that core, that comes through the, uh, the center of the hair shaft itself. A um, couple different patterns that we have here, and um, these are, are in order here. So intermittent or interrupted is going to be that one. Um, it's going to be periodic, not really going to have any kind of regular pattern, but it's going to be perhaps more spaces than it will be um, medulla. Fragmented is going to be the opposite. This is going to be a pretty solid medulla, but it will be broken up. Okay, so intermittent is going to have more space. Fragment will be more medulla. Um, continuous, then, obviously, is going to be a solid shaft. Stacked is going to be a whole bunch of little, almost looking like beads um, of the medulla coloring uh, down the length of the shaft. And then the final one, obviously, is going to be absent or not presence at all. So here's an example of medulla. Um, and so check, is this continuous, fragmented, or absent? Pretty obvious answer there, that is continuous. All right, so the medullary index, this is going to be determined by measuring the diameter of the medulla and dividing it by the diameter of the hair. Um, really what this is looking at is how large is that medulla um, itself uh, as compared to the whole uh, size of the shaft. Um, so for humans, the hair is generally less than a third, so you'll actually see kind of that core running through it. For animal hair, what we're going to see is a really large medulla, greater than half of the whole hair shaft itself is going to be this medulla. So an animal is very large. Um, the hair shape, um, this did not translate well into the slide, but that's okay. Um, you have round, which is going to result in straight hair. You have oval, which is going to result in curly hair. And then you have uh, a crescent moon shape, which actually looks like a macaroni noodle. Um, and this is going to be if you dissect the hair straight in half and you were to look at it on end, um, three different types. So, and again, obviously you can see how and why that would result in three different hair uh, textures, I suppose you could say. Then we have hair growth, um, antigen, catagen, and telogen. Uh, antigen is hair that is actively growing. Um, this is lasts up to five years. This hair is, um, uh, well, uh, let me move on. The, the catagen here, this is uh, hair that's not growing. This is a resting phase. Um, the big difference you have here is, um, if you think of uh, like peach fuzz, Right, peach fuzz is in a uh, it's catagen. It's it's not really growing. Um, it's in that resting phase, anaphase, a man's beard, okay, hair on the legs, things like that. Um, and then uh, it's the telogen is hair that's dying or about to fall out. Um, this is going to last uh, two to six months. Um, and the growth of approximately 0.5 millimeters per day, one centimeters per month. Um, some of you could probably argue your hair grows faster or slower. I think mine grows a lot faster than that, but um, that's an approximation, obviously. So this is this is not um, you know, guaranteed one individual to the next. And finally, the root. Um, the root is going to look different depending on whether the hair fell out or if it was violently pulled out. Um, so we have two looks here. This hair has fallen out. And this one over here has been pulled out, and you'll notice this one almost looks like a match that's on fire. The, the um, root got ripped out with it. It's very violent. The edges are, are um, pulled and torn, whereas the hair that fell out um, was a much more gentle process. Okay. Um, 
Also, the difference in the actual shape of the uh, hair itself. Um, an animal root shape is generally going to be a bit more spear. These You'll notice these are very round. Okay, uh, The animal ones are actually going to be... Um, you know the shaft and then the head itself and it'll come to like a spear like you know like it'll it's very pointy at the end okay so that's going to be the difference there between those all right that's all for this day of notes